Let me know, Albert. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. Need to get some sound? I uh, need to get need to get some sound. You can hear me? Okay. Well, good afternoon, everyone. Apologies for the uh, slightly late start. Uh, if it weren't, if we didn't know it was International Women's Day, it's the pandemic, and it, for all we know, it could be July. Uh, I mean, it's so hard to figure out what the days are. So being on time is actually a bit of a problem. Um, on behalf of Business in Vancouver, uh, welcome to the Terminal City Club this afternoon for the annual Influential Women in Business Ceremony. I'm Kirk LaPointe, publisher and editor-in-chief. Uh, we wish to acknowledge that we are here on the unceded ancestral territory of the Coast Salish people, the Squamish, the Musqueam, and the Tsleil-Waututh. We are grateful to be their guests and uh, they have stewarded the land so that we may be their guests. Uh, we also wish to thank the sponsors for today's event, the Chartered Professional Accountants of British Columbia, Faskin, uh, PricewaterhouseCoopers, C-SPAN Shipyards, and Scotiabank's Women's Initiative. And of course, a big uh, thank you to our judges, Tina Strauka, uh, Anu Eli of the Minerva Foundation, Carol Liao of UBC, Valerie Mann of Lawson Lundell, and our executive editor, Haley Wooden. And I'd be remiss if I did not thank Janet Helm for the statuettes, for her work, her constant work, in making sure that we honor you with, uh, with the best possible uh, memento. Um, I am now uh, going to uh, leave you, this, uh, and very excellent, uh, experienced hands today with our MC, Colleen Christie of Global Television. She's an award-winning television anchor, who of course hosts the News at Noon, and is a regular on the 5 and 6 p.m. British Columbia newscasts and on Global National, of course. I had the privilege to work with her as a colleague at uh, CTV before she landed at Global. She's a recipient of the Edward R. Murrow Award for Excellence, which is actually the best newscast in the world. So please welcome to our stage to guide the proceedings today, Colleen Christie. Thanks, Kirk. And just a correction on what Kirk was saying. We weren't colleagues. He was my boss. Let's, <laughs> let's be honest. Um, thanks for being here, everybody. What a gorgeous day, don't you think? Don't you think we deserve this? I, um, I feel very lucky. I got to walk here today to take advantage of the sunshine. I mean, truth be told, I was going to drive, but uh, I needed to fill up my car, and it was a choice between <laughs> fill it up, mortgage payment. Fill it up, mortgage payment. So I, I decided to walk. Um, happy International Women's Day. Give ourselves a hand. I have to say that, um, you know, as things start to open up, ladies, you'll agree with me on this, we have to get back into some old routines like, you know, makeup, manicures, so waxing, bathing, you know, the basics. I have to say, I am going to miss this pandemic. Um, but seriously, uh, women have been disproportionately affected by the pandemic, in particular racialized women, and it is long past time that we changed that. So I know you will all be making efforts to do that. It is my pleasure to be with you here today and uh, online. This is being streamed live. Uh, for this prestigious annual award ceremony recognizing five exceptional women leading businesses in British Columbia. Their stories of success are inspiring and we will hear from each of them today. Before we begin, I want to say as a journalist and the granddaughter of Ukrainian immigrants, I would like to begin by acknowledging the atrocities being committed in Ukraine under the directive of Russian President Vladimir Putin. This war is a stark reminder of why we cannot take democracy for granted and the freedom that comes with it for granted. Slava Ukraini, ya Ukre iniski. Thank you. To our first award, the Chartered Professional Accountants of British Columbia 
is the training and governing and regulatory body for more than 38,000 CPA members and 6,000 CPA candidates. CPA BC carries out its primary mission to protect, protect the public by enforcing the highest professional and ethical standard, standards and by contributing to the advancement of public policy. To present the award to Van City's Christine Bergeron, please welcome to the stage Lori Matheson, President and CEO of CPA BC. Thank you very much, Colleen, and happy International Women's Day, everyone. It is my privilege to present the Influential Women in Business Award today to Christine Bergeron, the CEO and President of Van City. Christine is one of Canada's leading financial institution executives and one of British Columbia's most influential economic decision makers. She rose from Chief Member Services Officer to the CEO and President role of Van City in 2020, and now she oversees the country's largest community-based credit union with assets of over $30 billion and more than 2,700 employees across 50 branches. She also serves as the CEO of Van City's federally chartered bank, Van City Community Investment Bank. Christine chairs the board of the new NBC Investment Corp, the crown agency that will guide 50, or sorry, $500 million, bigger than 50, in strategic investments over the coming years. She is the lone North American uh, representative on the United Nations Environmental Program Finance Initiative's Responsible Banking Board and a member of the Government of Canada's Sustainable Finance Action Council. Christine's expertise in the field of finance is unparalleled, with breadth across all asset classes and types of firms. She has been an early stage venture capitalist and a mezzanine debt financier. She has traded stocks and built public portfolios. She has led business banking and commercial real estate. She has built financial models, led wealth management teams, has taught entrepreneurial finance, has volunteered and mentored with various organizations, all before her current role as the president and chief executive of Van City. Very impressive. At the start of last year, Christine released Van City's five climate commitments, which lead the nation with a target of zero, net zero operations by 2040. Under her leadership, she hired Van City's first chief equity and people officer, is implementing findings from an external equity audit, and refocused the organization's indigenous banking strategy. Driven by the belief that doing good is good for business, Christine's commitment to an inclusive economy sets her apart as a progressive leader. Judges were impressed by Christine's deep expertise and her clear commitment to sustainability and equity in business. With that, it is my great and sincere pleasure to welcome to the stage Christine Bergeron of Van City to accept her Influential Women in Business Award. Thanks so much, Lori, and good afternoon. Um, I also just wanted to start by acknowledging uh, that I'm joining you on the lands of the Squamish, Musqueam, and tsleil Tooth nations, and I'm always so grateful to be able to live and work here on these lands. I also want to uh, quickly uh, try to acknowledge and figure out how to do this in a way that works. The Ukrainian people and how we're, they are fighting for democracy, our world is going through such profound change. Uh, and sometimes it feels this dissonance that we're here together um, while that's happening at the same time. And so although there is so much happening around us, um, it's also so lovely to see so many of you and to be here in person. Um, and I will warn you that the last true large event I was at was this one two years ago. So I'm completely out of practice to speaking to a room without a screen, literally two inches from my face. 
which I think most of you can appreciate. So it's really nice to be viewed as someone uh, influential within our business community, and I really view the recognition as a testament to the importance of the issues and the models that I, along with so many stellar colleagues, have championed for years and even decades now. The theme for International Business uh, Women's Day is break the bias. And we typically think about this in the context of gender and race and people and how our personal biases impact people and perpetuate exclusion. And obviously this matters a lot. But I think we also have to break the bias at the system level. And there are many systems from the economy to education to health and to business where bias is embedded uh, and sometimes silent and invisible. Um, apart to those, of course, that it's impacting. And we need to change it. We built the systems so we can actually undo them. So today I thought I'd just take a couple of minutes to talk about breaking the bias around the system of finance. I remember the early days in my career working uh, with venture capitalists down in Silicon Valley, seeing how cutting edge financings were getting done, realizing that it wasn't always the best idea that actually got the money. And at the time, one of the Silicon Valley firms was starting a new fund to invest only in apps. And I think it was actually BlackBerry apps, just to tell you how long ago it was. And I remember it because during the discussion, I realized I did not know what an app was. Um, it was that long ago. It was really early stage technology. And I say all this because there was so much opportunity, innovation, you know, move us forward, all the brain power and money. And although we did get Snapchat and new social ways to communicate, here we are today with heartbreaking conflict, with rising inequality, and a planet that might just not be able to sustain us all. And so I realized really early on that what you finance matters, um, and also that our current models of finance are a little broken, and therefore they're not serving as many of us as they should. So 20 years ago, some of us were investing in clean tech, and the question then was, what's clean tech? Um, it's too capital intensive, you can't make any money. Ten years ago, we were looking at how to add impact to risk return models. People would say, like, what do you mean adding impact to your return model, as in making less money, dropping your returns? You can't do that. Five years ago, speaking at a BC Tech conference about the importance of wider stakeholder engagement, and although I was speaking about it, it was certainly not in the plenary room. And then even recently, talking at a clean tech talk in 2019, just before the pandemic, really talking about how, you know, just throwing more money in the same system is not going to change the outcome. And people are wondering, but why not, right? And because systems can have assumptions and logic on their own that seem just natural and therefore unquestionable, and things like historical returns on finance, fund structures, mandates, um, and these were viewed as too hard to question and let alone break free from. It's very difficult to lead on something when it isn't the trend, uh, when others maybe think you're naive or don't think you understand. I knew people were very skeptical. Um, I knew what was on some of their minds. Does she not understand how finance and returns work? Does she not realize that you have to trade off returns for all this responsible stuff? Does she think business is charity? Actually, I did understand how all of it worked. I was trained as a venture capitalist. Um, I spent a long career in finance understanding valuations and bot deals, dark pools and bots, ROI and ROE. But I admit I've always questioned that basic assumption that maximizing returns above all else is what matters. I just didn't buy it. And the fact is, if the economy isn't about people, and all of us, that it isn't about anything that matters much at all. And so we've made some strides. We now try to cost in carbon, and we generally care more about externalities and ESG. And I think it's totally fair to say that we've improved. But we do need to go further and faster, all of us, each and every one in this room, uh, to influence business so that we start work on transforming our economy. It's not enough to minimize the impacts on the Earth. We need an economy that actually factors it in, so that sees protecting the earth as a basic business assumption. And when disparities in wealth get too wide, societies break. We're seeing that. And so we have to really think about an economy that actually guarantees equity for all. And when I look around the room today, I see the faces of so many friends 
And I feel so lucky to have known so many of you and to work with you on actually trying to create a better world. From my husband, Rich, who does this work every day, to colleagues at NBC, to Women's Enterprise Center, to just so many of you in this room, and especially to my Van City family, uh, who every single day think about the role we can play in proving a different model of business. And so I look forward to continuing to work with all of you to improve our community and to really ensure that business success will depend on protecting our planet, growing the circle of opportunity, and really furthering equity for all. So thank you so much for the recognition. Thank you so much, Lori of CPABC, and congratulations, Christine, and um, could you please run for public office? <laughs> Our next award is presented by the Faskin Law Firm. Faskin, BC's largest law firm of 140 lawyers, is part of a business and litigation practice founded in Canada in 1863. With more than 800 lawyers in, Canada, in Canadian offices, that makes it one of the country's biggest, with a global reach into four continents. Faskin has been an industry leader in making a significant commitment to diversity and inclusion in order to best reflect and serve its markets. To present the award to Jennifer Twiner McCarran, CEO of Thunderbird Entertainment, please welcome to the stage Amy Carruthers, corporate and commercial partner at Faskin. Amy. Thank you, Colleen. It is my pleasure to present the Influential Women in Business Award to Jennifer Twiner McCarran, one of Canada's leading arts and entertainment executives. Jennifer joined Atomic Cartoons as head of production in 2011 and was promoted to its chief executive role five years later when the company was acquired by Thunderbird Entertainment Group. In 2018, she became CEO of Thunderbird, overseeing the company's overall business and a team of more than 1,400. She also continues to serve as president of Atomic Cartoons, which has grown from 25 to more than 1,200 artists under her leadership. Jennifer's collaborative leadership style has been directly responsible for the company's continued growth, creative excellence, and thriving partnerships. She has led the company through numerous milestones, including a public offering, the opening of a second animation studio in Ottawa and a third one in Los Angeles, and the development of a global distribution and consumer products division. Along the way, Thunderbird has created award-winning scripted, unscripted, and animated programming in a company with revenues of more than $110 million. At the helm of Atomic Cartoons and Thunderbird, Jennifer has placed an emphasis on the advancement of women, BIPOC, and the LGBTQ2 communities. This work includes robust internal programs and policies to increase representation and advance inclusion, an internal Black Lives Matter group, and plans for a gender balance workforce by 2025. How about that? Within the broader business community, Jennifer has dedicated time over the past year to Canadian Chamber of Commerce's BIPOC Leadership and Inclusion Council and efforts at Ward Women's Society to empower women in tech, science, and new media. Judges considered her an exemplar for the development of an inclusive workplace and a model for excellence in engaged executive leadership. It is my pleasure to welcome to the stage Jennifer Twiner McCarran to receive her Influential Women in Business Award. Thank you. Okay, we come over here oh, on okay. the X. <laughs> okay. Okay. Nice to see you. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Okay. Oh, thank you very much. Thank you, Karen. <laughs> uh, thank you so much for having me here today. Uh, thank you to Business in Vancouver. Thank you to the Terminal City Club. 
for getting us all out of our track pants. <laughs> I'm extremely grateful. It's been a while. <laughs> and um, I want to thank all of my fellow award winners, Christine, Sharzad, Aisha, Elizabeth. It's a huge honor to be with you here today. Um, I really can't believe it. Uh, when I read through all of your inspirational stories, uh, what struck me was team, the importance of team. And for me, that has been everything. I'm here with my team today, um, and I wouldn't be here without them. Um, this award is as much for them as it could ever be for me. Um, these people have led with kindness and zero judgment and the most fortitude and tenacity I've ever seen. And again, this award is as much for them as it is for me. I am so grateful. When I go through my gratitude list every day, <laughs> you guys are at the absolute top. We have a mission at our company for content creators. So when we boil down the value of our work, it might just be helping parents cook potatoes quietly. <laughs> Um, and something nice comes on. <laughs> we know we're not always saving the whales, <laughs> but we do want everybody, regardless of race or gender, to see themselves reflected back in a positive light. That drives us, and that can help change the narrative, which is so important. Um, finally, I want to wish every single person in this room happy International Women's Day. Um, let's continue to cheer each other on, lift each other up, um, inspire confidence in each other and ourselves, even when we might not feel it ourselves. Um, we have the power to do that, each and every one of us. Lift everyone up around us. And um, that's what inspires me every day. And thank you again for having me. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Amy, and congratulations, Jennifer, on the award, and um, I think everybody in the room agrees with what you just said. Our next presenter is representing one of today's sponsors, Scotiabank, Canada's third largest bank, serving more than 25 million customers worldwide with more than 92,000 employees. Throughout its commitment, through its commitments to the community, through sports and culture, Scotiabank has been an important contributor to diversity and inclusion in Canada. To present today's award is Aisha Yang of Herbaland Naturals. Please welcome to the stage Scotiabank's director and group leader in British Columbia, Amina Vali Hashim. Amina. Thank you, Colleen. It is my pleasure today on behalf of Scotiabank to honor Aisha Yang as an influential woman in business. Aisha came with her husband to Canada from Taiwan in 2000 with no local education, connections, or family. At her dinner table in 2009, she began to sketch out the structure and ambitions of Herbaland. Now, little more than a decade later, Herbaland has grown into the largest manufacturer of nutritional gummies in Canada. The Richmond-based firm is one of the fastest growing companies in BC and Canada, with 180 employees, three full-action state-of-the-art manufacturing facilities of more than 150,000 square feet, and markets for its dozens of ethically sourced, zero-waste nutritional gummy products in more than 40 countries worldwide. Aisha's evolution as an executive has seen her take on a significant involvement in the community, mentoring and hiring women who form a majority of the company's senior leadership. She is an active member of the Richmond Chamber of Commerce's Women in Leadership efforts and as an engaged board member of Help Change My City, which supports marginalized youth and single mothers. Aisha has also emerged as a leader for this country in the efforts to broaden trade and investments in Asia. It is no surprise that Herbaland was a 2019 BC Expert Award recipient. Judges concluded that Aisha's career trajectory, in particular her persistence to develop an inf a market of healthier products to advocate nutritional choices, serves as a model for the Influential Women in Business Award, as does her commitment to mentoring and supporting women in her own business. It is my pleasure to bring to the stage Aisha Yang, the co-founder and CEO of Herbaland Naturals, to accept this award.
Thank you, Amina. Well, thank you, Business in Vancouver. You did a really good job to make me a public speaker in two weeks. <laughs> I don't know if it works or not, but it's pretty efficient. Thank you. <laughs> Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Aisha Yan, co-founder and CEO of Herbal and Naturals. I want to thank you, everybody, being here today, and congratulations for all the winning, uh, winning award recipient. Today, we are here to celebrate International Women's Day. And I know there's uh, hundreds of international uh, influential women in business and I'm very grateful to be here to share my journey with you. 21 years ago, when a Taiwanese woman and her Pakistani husband immigrated to Canada, the best place on earth, we know we are very grateful to call Canada home. And we know something amazing is waiting for us. Starting Herbal Land, it's not an easy journey, especially you are immigrant and woman of color. It takes more than just a business idea. It took courage. I still remember clearly 12 years ago when I holding, holding my newborn baby while starting herbal line in my kitchen with my husband. At that time, I had the only one wish to bring food to the table to support my family. 12 years later, we are very grateful to have a big team at Herboland to support more than 220 families to live a better life. Because a woman with love and determination to protect your family, you have more than what you passion in your mind. You can do more than you can do. Working 16 hours a day, seven days a week, juggling between kitchen, your office, your kids' swimming class, and your un overdue laundry. And don't forget you have to prepare lunch for tomorrow. <laughs> this is woman entrepreneur's day-to-day -day routine, and we are proud of it. Because we know women in business, you want to prove to the world you can do it. So today, Herbaland, we have uh, more than four facilities in Richmond, BC, and producing 70 million bottles of gummies to 40 countries around the world. We are very grateful for the contribution from our team members. And let's talk about influence. Uh, today, in Herbaland, we're always thinking about how to make a positive impact. Our core value is inclusivity, sustainability, and community. We have supported more than, uh, more than thousands of families during the pandemic, and especially when we, uh, we everybody suffer, we support the charities, we local, local charities, and also do our best to provide the jobs to the new immigrant and single moms and students with disabilities. Because we know we do it from our heart, we can inspire more people in the world. And I got some exciting news to share with you. In April, Herbaland will be the first company to provide 100% compostable packaging. This is going to be innovation, and that's going to inspire a lot of companies to follow our steps. We are aiming to reduce two tons of plastic bottles, two, two tons of plastic, and a lot of, um, to be carbon neutral by 2023. In the meantime, we are going to commit with our tree planting partners to plant 2.5 million of trees. So is that sounds exciting? <laughs> okay, so please check www.herbaland.ca in April. <laughs> and put the discount code BIV for your special offer. <laughs> well, I would like to thank my amazing team, Herbaland team, especially the woman leader sitting over there. You are my motivation to come to work every single day. I will also want to thank WPO, Women President Organization. Their team members are definitely my best friend and we support each other. My lovely friend, my, my lovely families, like three kids, Hania, Mina, and Harris, always encourage me to step out of my comfort zone. And the most important person, my life partner, my business.
my, my husband, Musharraf. <laughs> so um, Herbaland, we will continue to work hard to motivate ourselves to do better, and we will dedicate ourselves for the next generation to live a better life. Thank you very much. Thank you, Amina, and congratulations, Aisha, on the award and for your incredible hard work, your courage, and your generosity to the community. Thank you. For our next award, we turn to one of our sponsors, Price Waterhouse Coopers, best known now as PWC, a multinational professional services network of firms and the second largest in the world. PWC is considered one of the big four accounting firms. Its 7,300 partners from coast to coast to coast provide audit and assurance, tax, deals, not tax deals, but tax deals, and consulting services. It's commitment, that's a totally different business. It's commitment to a diverse and inclusive workforce includes an intensive women in leadership program. Please welcome to the stage our next presenter, Robert Cord, partner at PWC, to honor Sharzad Rafa Rafati of BBTV. Thank you. Robert. Thank you, Colleen. It's my pleasure today to honor Sharzad Rafati of BBTV. In 2005, Sharzad founded Broadband TV, more commonly known today as BBTV, a global digital entertainment company to empower creators and inspire audiences. Headquartered right here in Vancouver, the company is the world's second largest video property after Google and Facebook in terms of unique viewers. Sharzad has been the spirited drive and energy that has propelled BBTV to success. As the company's CEO, she recently led BBTV's IPO on the Toronto Stock Exchange, which was the only company with a sole female founder and CEO to ever list on the TSX to date. She has also personally brokered successful deals and major media companies, with major media companies, music publishers, telecommunications firms, professional sports leagues, and internet giants. With the company generating over 35 billion monthly impressions, Sharzad is building one of the strongest ecosystems in digital video worldwide by connecting BBTV's owned and operated brands, content, top talent, millennial audiences, and digital platforms, all powered by their proprietary technology. Judges recognize Sharzad's leadership and business success, as well as her commitment to championing equity in business. Over the past five years, BBTV has had a 0% pay gap. 40% of its employees and managers identify as female, and the company operates a carbon neutral business. Sharzad serves as co-chair of the G20 Alliance for the Empowerment and Progression of Women's Economic Representation. It is my pleasure to award Sharzad Rafati as one of this year's recipients of the Influential Women in Business honor. Unfortunately, today she is at a day-long investors conference and unable to attend, but has recorded this video for us. Please. Watch. Good afternoon, everyone. I really wish I could be there in person to celebrate with all of you and to congratulate my fellow Influential Women in Business Award recipients. I feel so humbled to be included among such an incredible group of women, and I want to thank Business in Vancouver for this great honor. I appreciate all that you do to recognize the great leaders and entrepreneurs in our city, and that you've made a point to highlight diversity in all of its forms. I believe it is important to embrace our journeys as they really do define us. And my childhood journey really shaped who I am today. It was the main driver behind the creation of BBTV. As a young girl in Iran during the revolution, content was rationed and I only had access to a handful of TV channels, but I could see the power of content even at the small scale. My dream to build a global business started at this young age. So when I was 17, as a young woman, I moved to Vancouver by myself with just one suitcase, no computer skills and very little English. 
Content, again, played a big role in my life, helping me learn the language and exposing me to new cultures. And suddenly there was so much more of it. And it was around this time that I built the business model for BBTV. And today BBTV is a leader in creator economy with 600 million people around the world watching our content every month. I started as a girl with a dream and stand here as a woman fulfilling that dream. I know that I'm the outlier an exemplar rather than an example of the norm. In many ways, I know that my fellow recipients are too. It brings me back to the feeling that I had back in October of 2020 when BBTV went public. We listed BBTV on the TSX and it was the largest IPO ever listed with a sole female founder and CEO. And it was one of the top 10 tech TSX listings of all time. With our IPO, uh, we broke important new ground and paved the way for countless people, including women and girls, who envision a future with more potential to be leaders. I felt hope that many could see themselves in our success and realize that no achievement is out of reach, no matter what corner of the world you come from. You really can become what you believe, and you can make that childhood dream a reality. My dream was more than starting a business. It was about making a positive impact in the world. If I look back at everything that we've achieved at BBTV, I'm most proud of the fact that we built a quadruple bottom line business in which the company we measure success, not just based on financial performance, but also through people, social and environmental goals. I'm incredibly proud that BBTV is exactly that. We strive for equality. We had a 0% pay gap, no matter how you slice it over the last five years. And 40% of our employees and manager identify as female. We strive for sustainability as we've earned the right to call ourselves a carbon neutral business. We strive to impact our communities through programs like Future Play, driving STEM education for elementary students alongside the Vancouver School Board and G20 Empower that is advancing women's representation in leadership across G20 countries. Not enough companies in our space can say that, that they're making an impact more broadly than their financial growth. As a proud Canadian, I believe my story and the stories of my fellow recipients is a testament to how anyone can make their dreams a reality with hard work and determination. We also need to do it right, knowing that diversity, sustainability, and care for our communities can foster a more entrepreneurial, equal, and representative world and a healthier planet while also powering a prosperous economy. I want young women to think that she's done it so I can do it too. I also want to thank the team at BBTV for truly making me feel like the luckiest person in the world every day that I go to work. I couldn't do this without them and this award is for all of us. Thank you again for this incredible recognition and to Christine, Jennifer, Elizabeth and Aisha, I'm thrilled to be in such remarkable company. Congratulations again to all of you, upwards and onwards. Thanks so much, Robert, and congratulations to Shaz Shaz I don't know why I'm having so much trouble with her name. It's not that difficult. <laughs> Sharaz, um, Sharzad, Sharzad, Sharzad. I will not forget it. Um, to present our Lifetime Achievement Award today, we turn to another of our sponsors, C-SPAN Shipyards, a leader in Canada's shipbuilding and ship repair industry. With modern facilities and a dedicated workforce of approximately 2,700 in North Vancouver and Victoria, the company has proven itself to be a trusted and strategic partner on a range of complex projects for both government and the private sector. C-SPAN Shipyards, is proud to deliver Canada's non-combat program of work under Canada's national shipbuilding strategy. The company is building state-of-the-art ships in Canada for the Canadian Coast Guard and Royal Canadian Navy. Through its NSS-related work, C-SPAN Shipyards is creating thousands of jobs, generating significant economic benefit and rebuilding Canada's shipbuilding and marine industries. C-SPAN's commitment to diversity and inclusivity features, among other things, a company-wide equity and diversity committee. To present the Lifetime Achievement Award to the Downtown Surrey BIA's Elizabeth Modell, please welcome to the stage 
Melanie Bradley, General Counsel for C-SPAN Shipyards. Melanie. Thank you, Colleen. I'm privileged today to present the Influential Women in Business Award for Lifetime Achievement to Elizabeth Modell. The CEO and President of the Downtown Surrey Business Improvement Association. Elizabeth emerged as the heart and soul of Surrey's downtown business community in one of Canada's fastest growing communities, Surrey, which will be BC's largest city within two decades. Since joining the association in 2009, Elizabeth has played a tremendous role in shaping transfer the transformation of Surrey's downtown core into a thriving business hub with advanced transportation links and rapidly growing developments. She brings her collaborative management style and more than 35 years of experience to her efforts to develop Surrey's downtown as a futuristic, safe, and diverse place to live, work, and thrive. With Elizabeth's help, Surrey City Center has become a destination for business and community, a place to invest, develop, grow, learn, and thrive. Her work as an advisory committee member with SFU contributed to the university building its new sustainability engineering program in Surrey. Elizabeth has contributed her expertise to board leadership of British Columbia Chamber executives. Her hard work and commitment has been acknowledged by, recognized by the Chamber of Commerce Executives of Canada and the American Chamber of Commerce. Elizabeth has held numerous committee board positions in a ceaseless effort to advocate ethical, sustainable business practices in the advancement of women in executive ranks. Judges considered her work to be exemplary in leading principled economic growth. While this is a lifetime achievement award, we know that Elizabeth, who has completed more than 100 triathlons, has many more kilometers on her. It's my pleasure to welcome to the stage to accept the Lifetime Achievement Award, Elizabeth Modell. Gosh, I don't know how to follow all those wonderful women in front of me. They were amazing, just amazing. Uh, thank you, everyone, and uh, it's really, truly an honor to be here today. Uh, it's just so great to get back into person, people again, and, and seeing all of you. But uh, I, really, I really am uh, truly, truly touched by these incredible women ahead of me, Christine, um, Jennifer, um, where is she? Ash Ashia, there, there you are, and of course, um, uh, Sharad, who wasn't able to be here today, but uh, all incredibly talented in their own right. Uh, I also want to um, thank Business in Vancouver, BIV, for hosting this event. Kurt, your team, um, incredible work, thank you. Uh, thank you to the nominating committee who did so much work behind the scenes, my nominee, and um, lastly, we can't have an event like this without the sponsors, so thank you sponsors. I know that more than anyone else, so thank you so much. So, you know, it's really hard to, um, for a person like myself, who's always been forward thinking and always have those goals in mind moving forward, it's always hard to look in the rear view mirror. But when I was um, contacted that I had been award, awarded this incredible honor, I had, to, I had to take a look and reflect on my past, which I don't usually do uh, because I'm always moving forward. And uh, in the reflection and, and looking back, I, I realized that there's certain key things in life and at this stage in my life, with my white hair, I can give advice, um, but the key things in life that I always think are, are really, really important. And one thing that 
always comes back to me is in reflection is values, values. So growing up in a family business, I owned and operated six of my own businesses. I, I, I closed some, I sold some, made some money, lost some money, but it's all part of moving forward. And, but I think the role that gave, the roles that gave me the most um, award to myself and the most um, really inner, inner satisfaction was the roles of association management. Yes, I cut my teeth in association manager uh, with the Chamber of Commerce for the Tri-Cities. And then um, I think my most satisfactory role has been the one with the Downtown Surrey Business Improvement Association, of which my fellow board members are here, um, Joanne from my hiring committee, and, um, and people who've been my, my mentors along the way, um, and uh, people who have lifted me up. And, uh, and I want to acknowledge them and thank them. And not only that, is in, in reflection of it all, the values. What do I value most in my life? Of course, it's family. It's friends, friends who become family because you've known them so long. Um, those people who are your business associates, uh, your community, and of course, more than ever now, the value for our country and the freedom that we have. So having, having said that, I just want to relate a little story to you about the value of business associations that have grown into friendships. Now, all of you here probably have business associates that you might consider friends, or you might consider closer than friends. For me, I met one person early in my career, almost 40 years ago, uh, who was my counterpart in Squamish. And we decided at that point in time to open a bakery, even though I was employed full time, in Squamish, even though I worked in Coquitlam. And one day, I had, <laughs> I had a call at work in Coquitlam, it was my head baker, and he said to me, Elizabeth, I hate to tell you this, but we have a big order come in from Whistler. You're gonna have to come up tonight and bag 20 dozen buns. So off I went after work, up to Squamish, and I was bagging buns all by myself. My phone went. And it was my friend and business associate in the same role that I had in Squamish, Wendy. And she is here today. And I, she said to me, lights on, are you there? And I said, yes I am, I'm bagging these buns. She says, well I'm coming by. And then she came with her high heels, her skirt, suit, with a bottle of wine. Bless her little heart. <laughs> so we actually ended up sitting down on buckets, drinking wine from mugs, and talking and catching up for an hour and a half. When she left, she got up and her skirt had this great big ring of flour on the back of it <laughs> from the bucket. And I said, oh my gosh. And I said, I'm gonna get, give me the dry cleaning bill. She said, you know what? This was so worth it. There's no dry cleaning bill. So what I, when I relate that, it's a value of friendship that comes from those, those personal relationships that you make along the way in business that mean a lot that you should cherish. And having said that, I'll close by saying value each other, support each other, mentor each other. We're all in this sisterhood together. And remember, there is no elevator to success. You have to take the stairs. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Melanie, and congratulations, Elizabeth. <laughs> what a great story. Um, I'm still stuck, though, on the 100 triathlons. Seriously? Ironman. Ironmans. Holy, my knees hurt just thinking about it. Ow, that's amazing. Our final element in the program today recognizes Michelle Poquet a 2016 IWIB winner and a prominent lawyer and community activist who worked tirelessly for 20 years to advance women in business, law, First Nations, and non-traditional sectors. 
She was an inspiration to others until she lost her battle to cancer in 2016. To present the award, please welcome to the stage again Janelle Aker of Van City. Janelle. Hello. The Minerva Foundation partners with BIV and is supported by Van City in presenting three scholarships this year. Two for $1,000 to both Christina Pierre to pursue her Associate of Arts degree coursework in criminology at the Nicola Valley Institute for Technology and to Cora McIntosh to pursue her professional designation following her degree in environmental planning at UNB and one scholarship for $5,000 to Melissa McKay, who is pursuing her First Nations and Niska Studies Certificate at the Wilp Wilkoskwa Niska Institute before pursuing her Bachelor of Commerce degree at UNBC. Please watch the screen for videos from one of the recipients, Melissa McKay. Sengiget Sigidam Hanak Gantanix Nisup. With Lamam Gamatsni, Wolpsite Mouse will work with some genetic knee, e get one silk woods all right. Chiefs, matriarchs, and honored guests, my Nishka name is Singing Starfish. I come from the house of my height mass of the Ganetta tribe, living in get one silk in the Nass Valley. I'd first like to acknowledge and thank the First Nations traditional lands in which these events are taking place, and to thank the hosts of this amazing event, Minerva BC, BIV, and Van City for bringing us all together today. My apologies for not being able to make it in person, but I am thankful I can send a big thank you for being a recipient of the Michelle Poquet Leadership Award today. This award means so much to me with my educational and prevent professional goals to complete my education. I am currently a single mother of twin girls who are nine years old. And through the different capacities of work I've done for our nation, it has built a solid foundation for me to continue on with my educational goals within business. I want to build a good quality of life for my children and I, and through this award, it has given not only financial support, but also support knowing that I can push forward and to keep going. The sky's the limit and through opportunities like this, you have given women like myself a voice to keep going. Doik Sitnissim, Luamf Gaudi. I thank you all. My heart is happy. Thank you, Janelle. I'm looking for you. There you are. And uh, congratulations to the recipients of this important award in our community. We want to thank all of our sponsors today and congratulate all of our IWIB winners. Let's hear a round of applause for all of them. <laughs> We'd like our recipients to come forward for a group photo in just a moment. On behalf of BIV, thank you for attending and for watching from home the Influential Women in Business Awards. I'm Colleen Christie of Global News. Thanks for being here. Hope you have a wonderful afternoon. Take care. <laughs>